This is the United States of America, home to the red, white, and blue. One of the most iconic flags in the world. And today we're going to be talking about more flags, specifically municipal city flags across this great land. So every once in a while, the North American Vexillological Association, aka NAVA, holds a survey for people to vote on flags on a scale from 1 to 10. 10 being the best, 1 being the worst. Now they haven't done this in quite a while, but in late 2022, they held another survey. 312 different flags from around the United States were chosen to be scored, and 2,852 people participated in this online survey. And thanks to some great people at NAVA, I've been able to get my hands on the results of what the worst and the best flags are in the United States. Now let it be known that in these results that NAVA themselves does not judge the flags. As well, your humble host didn't vote either. I'm just the messenger this time. Crazy, I know. These results are purely that of the public. But at the same time, they're trying to follow the basic design principles of a good flag or a bad flag. There are five basic rules for having a good flag. They are, keep it simple. A flag should be so simple a child can draw it from memory. Number two use meaningful symbolism. A flag's images, colors, or patterns should relate to what it symbolizes. Number three, use two or three basic colors. Try to limit the colors on the flag to three and make sure they contrast well and come from a standard color set. Number four, no lettering or seals. Never use writing or any kind of seal on the flag. And number five, be distinctive or be related. Avoid duplicating other flags, but use similarities to show connections. So unlike my other series where I go in depth about the history of city flags and talk about how they were created, this video is more or less just going to show you what people voted for being the best and the worst flags. I'm not going to go in depth with any of the flags. It's more or less a show and tell to show you what the people have voted for. Democracy. So I'll start by sharing the top 50 results, then the bottom 10 results. Again, I'd like to thank NAVA for giving me the opportunity to share this with you. And again, before we begin, if you like this type of content, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. Hit the bell for notifications, and we have a Patreon. Let's begin, and check out the best and worst city flags in the United States. So as a quick example, what you're going to see is a screen filled with a picture of a flag. The red tells you which position this flag was ranked among the 312 flags involved in the survey. The white is the city represented on the flag. And the blue is the score the flag is earned. It's an average score among the 2,000 plus people who voted in the survey. Remember, 10 good, 1 bad. Alright, the top 50 voted flags in the country. So our top 50. Upper Arlington, Ohio. Looking a lot like the California state flag. Kennett Township's flag is actually a square, not a traditional flag shape. Neat job with the interchangeable leaf colors. In episode 4 of Flags of American Cities, we chronicle how Old Town got this flag made. It's true what they say, pretty much every single flag in Texas has a star on it. Why I really like this flag is because if you know Redding, that white shark fin is actually the shape of a bridge, a walking path in the city. Episode 4 of Flags of American Cities, we went in depth about this flag. I really like it. It's not Dawagiak, it's Dawagiak. Gray isn't too common on flags. Seward's flag honestly sort of falls into an almost too generic pattern for me. That's going to be an issue with a lot of modern flags. We talked about Montpelier's flag in the very first episode of Flags of American Cities. A major improvement to their old flag. Clinton's flag actually has the crescent from the South Carolina flag in it. I'm not sure why. I do like this though. Here's where modern design flag principles are just making flags look too generic. This could be anywhere. Coral Springs has a great looking flag.
very fitting Madison has a rose on their flag. They are known as the Rose City, and there are roses literally all over the city. Durham's going with some very primary colors here and some simple stars. I like it. I'm just curious how this actually looks on a flagpole, though. Keeping with a the theme, the black is not part of this flag, so it's actually like a bergy or a streamer type design. It's not your traditional flag shape. Again, I'm curious how this flag looks on a flagpole. I fear that the blue with the star might be too heavy on the end of the flag. Flags of American Cities Episode 3, we talked about Spokane getting ready to choose a new flag, and, well, here it is. We'll go more in depth in the future. Episode 1 of Flags of American Cities, we featured this flag as well. This is a brand new flag for the city of Jackson, Tennessee. They revealed it August 2022. I like it, but I'm not real sure what it means. But there it is, Madison, Georgia. When I think of Dodge City, Kansas, I think of cowboys, and that star makes me think of like a sheriff. And there you go. I really wonder what the meaning behind this flag is. I love this flag from Metairie, Louisiana. It's just clean, I love the colors, nice job. It's good, but I almost find it a little too busy. I really like this flag for Riverside. They put the heaviest portion of the design closest to the flagpole to balance it out. That is good. Kenny Bunkport has a very nice, simple design. Good job. Again, here we're just getting too generic. Swishes and swoops and a star. This could be anywhere, but it still looks nice, just doesn't tell me anything about Crystal. Same thing here with Cedar Rapids. Nice flag, doesn't really tell me much. And knowing nothing about Newton, Kansas, I can tell this town is based off of agriculture and a crossroads for railroad, transportation hub. Good job. Again, the flag tells you everything you need to know. Port Clinton is a small port on Lake Erie. There you go. Wavy lines anyone would assume is water, so good job. St. George, Utah. We talked about it in episode three of Flags of American Cities. I posed the question, is it a city flag or a logo for a corporate entity? Ah yes, episode two of Flags of American Cities. We talked about the little city that wanted a flag, Sioux Falls. I think just about every city in Kansas has a good looking flag. Great looking flag here, Topeka. If you know the city of Madison, you'd actually know this flag makes a lot of sense. It's hard to explain right now because this isn't the format to do it, but yeah, there you go. Good flag. Simple flag. It bends. It's one of the things that Pete Buttigieg did as mayor for the city, but it's generic. Good looking flag. Just too generic. Too generic. Good looking flag. I guess this is an example of a Texas town deciding to not use a star, but instead using a sun. Duluth support city and it gets really cold. Do I get that from this flag? Oddly enough, yes. Yes, I do. Flags of American Cities episode three. We talked about how Pocatello got a brand new flag right here. Originally, they had one of the worst flags. I predicted that their new flag would be one of the best in the country, and here it is 11th. Gosh. And we're in the top 10, Kingman, Kansas. This is a great looking flag. Great vibrant colors. Obviously, someone in your town of 3,000 really likes flags. Again, another nice flag. I'd be curious to know all the meaning behind this flag. Maybe in the future we'll do so. In episode two of Flags of American Cities, we honed in on this flag and talked about it, and I really like this flag. I'm glad to see it in the top 10. I told you, Wheeling, we didn't forget you. Lincoln, Nebraska here in seventh has a great looking flag. And without even knowing the meaning, I can already tell that the Nebraska state capital is partially in this flag. Without knowing, I would think that West Plains is maybe the heart of a county seat or the center of a transportation area. Nice little flag here. We're in the top five with Salt Lake City. I know this is a newer flag chosen by the city. It's nice, but I don't know if I would say top five. I do like the colors and I think it looks clean. 
number four, a great looking flag from Norman, Oklahoma. I immediately think of a Native American dream catcher or something like that with that star. I don't know if that's the meaning or anything. Flags of American Cities episode 3, we were just talking about how Salem was going to choose a new flag, and here it is, and it's ranked third. Holy cow, good job. And here we are with number two with Reno, Nevada. I think it's a great looking flag, but dare I say that logo could really just be a generic logo on a shirt or something? And number one, Tulsa, Oklahoma. We talked about you in episode two of Flags of American Cities. Congratulations, you were ranked number one in the country. It's time we dive into the 10 worst city flags based on their average score. Baldwin. It tells us everything we need to know, though. It's the town name and the year it was incorporated. Bulk Springs. The city of growing community? Or is it the city of Bulk Springs growing community? That's... eh. This would make nice letterhead. I mean, it tells us everything we need to know. There's a historic building, there's an Abraham Lincoln hat, an American flag, it's Route 66 maybe runs through there. It's along the Sangamon River, okay. The last time in the 2000s when NAVA did a survey, Pocatello, Idaho was the worst flag. Apparently Caldwell, Idaho wants to vie for that position now. Pontotoc, Mississippi, where families come first and we love every second. I mean, I don't disagree, that's a nice thing, but probably could do better on a flag than that. Fifth worst flag is Belle Glade, Florida, and this town's already down on its luck. Do we really need to slam them for their flag as well? Nitro, West Virginia. It's the place where they made Agent Orange, and it's located in a place lovingly called Chemical Valley. It's also a living memorial to World War I, with an actual number one on the flag. Overland Park, Kansas. Above and beyond, by design. What? Well, let me just say that this is actually an improvement over their old flag. West Hampton, Massachusetts. Let's make a flag. Go to the park and take a picture of that tree and we'll stamp on our town seal. Even better, we'll take the photo in winter when everything looks dead. And the worst rated city flag is the City of Ranger in Texas. That apparently was incorporated on April 4th, 1919. They used to have oil drilling. There's a generic bulldog with an R-I-S-D. Uh, Ranger Independent School District, maybe? And then on the left, we have Texas Ranger, because Texas, with a star. There's also a star. I actually feel like I learned a lot about this town without ever being there. So maybe this flag's doing its job. And I mean, the flag literally has an old photo on the flag with writing on it. So according to all the people who voted in this NAVA survey, Ranger, you have the worst city flag in America. So there you have it, a quick rundown of NAVA's latest flag survey from 2022. We checked out the top 20, as well as the bottom 10. And unless you want me to go through all 312 flags, that's all you're going to see for now. But if you want to check out the results for yourself, I will provide a link below. And if you like flags and would like to know more about them, then please check out our series on our channel. Flags of American Cities, and Flags of Canadian Cities. With the possibility of more coming in the future, including one called Fly Your Flag, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, comment below, and remember, fly your flag high.